Hello again, this is Hildron from YouTube and Computer Clan on ComputingClan.com. We're continuing the How to Make a 3D Animation series. I was doing some random but basic stuff showing you to show you the functionality of the tools in the program Cheat of 3D for Mac OS X. So, let's continue with something more advanced, shall we? Let's open up a new project in Cheat of 3D. Blank Canvas. Yippee. Alright. Lighting and materials. That's what we're going to be focusing on this time. So in Polygon, we're going to add a plane. Not like a flying plane, but like, you know, a flat plane. And go to the scale mode. And scale it so it's bigger. I know I made this mistake before saying that up and down is the Z axis, but actually I think up and down is the Y axis. Now, I corrected myself in that tutorial for the video, but for some reason it's a little bit different than I thought. But that doesn't matter because you can still edit it in here. So let's turn the camera a bit. This you cannot add depth to like this because the planes are supposed to be flat. No matter how much you add, it will stay the same. Even though a number shows up in here, it doesn't get any thicker. So, yeah, that's the general overview of a plane. Yippee. Alright, now let's get into some better stuff. We'll go into spline like we did before and do text. Select the text. Moving mode. Move it over to the center here. Drag, the, drag this gray cube to scale it proportionally without using the red, green, or blue ones. That works with movement as well. And we'll move it to the center of the grid. And I'm doing this, of course, assuming that you already know background knowledge of Cheetah 3D or you've seen previous tutorials from me or any other user. So let's type in welcome. Like my Mac OS X Snow Leopard thing. And let's recenter it. Kind of. And adjust the size of the width of the plane. So it fits. Okay, good. Alright, so now going to the materials, we're going to add a material, we're going to add the snow leopard wallpaper with a reflection, so select material, and it shows up in here, but right now it's nothing really. So there's material, color, ambient, diffuse, specular, emissive, bump mapping, reflection, transparency, those are the tools for the textures and materials for this specific material. So click on texture, it'll expand down and you can hit load, let's see here, pictures, Snow Leopard Wallpaper. So now that we have that selected, we scroll down. We'll go to Reflection. We'll turn the intensity up to about 3. And apparently... Oh, wait, that's the maximum. 1 is the maximum. It's 0.3 we need. So when I said 3, it's just really 3. You can just drag little arrows here. My bad. It's okay, though. But now you can see the reflection here and the wallpaper. It even shows it down here, so now you can see that. So then click and drag this onto the material. I mean, click and drag the material, you know, onto the object. So now we created the material on the object. Now, like I said before, go to Creator, and we will create an extrude. And also, like I showed before, drag the text onto the extrude, and then it groups it underneath and adds the 3D look. So we'll now render this and take a look at it. That is what it looks like so far. Now the default lighting is the camera light. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn that off. So, so, so by selecting the camera, you can scroll down and select the checkbox that says camera lights. And that will turn off the default lights by itself. And now that we have that off, you can add in your own lighting. So I believe... You know, in theory, when you render this now, there will be absolutely no light at all. So as you can see, it's black, and that's boring. And if you can see this little gray frame here, that's the camera capture. So make sure you, the image or video that you want is within that screen. That'll really help when you render the video, so you don't have any cropped out edges that you want in there. Just a little note to yourself. So now that we've turned off the camera light, leave the shadows on, because we're, we don't like shadows. And to get really good quality lighting... We use something called 
ray tracing. So we go to the scene menu here, which is a picture of a camera, add scene object, scroll down to light, and now we have a light in here. Now as you can see, the scene adjusts the brightness to the light. So we go to move, and we're going to move it above the objects. Nice. So now that the light is selected here in the object browser, we can adjust its parameters. You can turn it into like a spotlight, ambience, area, distant. We're just going to keep it on point. And we're going to do ray trace plus trans for the shadows because then that looks really realistic. That's really good. And we'll turn the samples up to like 10. Of course, this will slow down the render, but the ending product is beautiful. And... We will test this after I find the intensity, because that might be one important thing. Right here, under properties, intensity. We will turn that to about 10. As you can see, it gets a little brighter here. And we'll scroll out a smidgen. Move that up. Scroll back in and take a render preview. Now, as you can see, that took a while to render, and as you can see, also, that is pretty freaking bright and needs to be turned down a lot. So, back into the intensity, we'll probably turn it down to 2. I did not realize I'd have it that strong. And let's render it one more time again and see what the product looks like. The final product looks beautiful once you tweak it a lot. So, as you can see, we're starting to get there. If you want to do more of a spotlight look, like I did in my Snow Leopard video thing, under properties, light type, you select spot. So then you get like this cone. It's all good. So now that you have the cone, you can adjust the size. Excuse me. Sorry, you got to adjust the size apparently from somewhere else. But this is an important thing here, the cutoff angle. And the more you move that up, the wider it gets. And the smooth cutoff, you want to put it at, we'll just put it at like at maximum right now, which I believe is like around 80. It is 80 actually. So then that will make like the border of the light like a feathered edge. So it looks a lot nicer. And we will render that. Let's just move it up a bit. It might be a little too bright still. And then render it one more time to see what it looks like now. Now, as you can see, the shadows are starting to interfere. Now, sometimes if they do, like I said, some materials probably don't take the shadows too well, or the lighting is a little weird. But let's test it without the shadows then. So in the camera, under the render, we already turned off the camera light, like I showed you before. Now we'll just uncheck the shadows, and then render the project again. And there you go. As you can see, we got some pretty beautiful lighting there. And of course, you can add materials to the text. And adjust the lighting. You, you can tweak this. You know, I've tweaked my lighting for my videos for quite a long time. Just until it was like absolutely perfect the way I wanted it. Because there is a lot of, you know, quality options and all that stuff. And you can even use the rotating tools on the cone here. So you can see the light there. And let's render it one more time to see what it looks like. As you can see, it's starting to get better and better and better, and that looks pretty cool. Lighting works with lots of good objects. If the shadows start to interfere, turn them off. You still get the dynamicness on here, like the shadows here, but they don't cover up the ground. And then your material won't get all screwed up, but you still get a nice reflection, and the reflection is pretty beautiful. So, if we go to the Render Manager, you can actually see some stuff I've done before. Show Render Manager. Open the job manager, scroll up somewhere here. And I was looking at this in the last tutorial we've been doing here, last couple 
tutoring section sessions for Cheetah 3D. And as you can see, if, once you tweak the lighting a lot, you can get some pretty high quality graphics here. So yeah, thank you for watching this tutorial session for Cheetah 3D, and see you next time for more advanced stuff, I guess.